guys love Jesus this morning? Yeah. You ready to go just a little deeper? How many of you got touched by the Lord last night? How many of you feel like you changed your life last night? Wasn't that amazing? You know, he wants to do more tonight, or today, I should say. I woke up saying, Lord, you did such amazing things last night. He said, I'd like to do a lot more this morning. So come on. So let's, let's, let's not treat this as being just super common. We are in the presence of Jesus, who makes all things new every single day, okay? And the Bible says your, your mercies are new every morning. So, so look at me for a moment. Look at me. There's a real Jesus in this room right now. He's real. He's really here. And he's closer to you than the people around you. You guys are packed in pretty tight up here. But he's way closer than anyone here. He's closer than the shirt on your back. Isn't that amazing? Now that real Jesus can be experienced. So what he's kind of doing nonstop, 24-7, is trying to get your attention. He's like waving at you. Hey, I'm right here. Would you talk to me? Would you wait? Would you connect with me? Would you look at me? Let me talk back to you. Would you wait long enough to hear me? And that's what he's asking for this morning. He wants you to meet him. You say, well, I already met him last night. I gave my heart to him. How many of you left everything last night and gave your full yes to Jesus? Wasn't that amazing? Like the whole place came forward. Well, here's the deal. That's just the beginning. That's just the beginning of a life of newness day after day with the Lord. Okay? So just lift your hands right there. And um, I want you just, just to wait there for a second in His presence. Just close your eyes so that you're not distracted. And just every eye closed, every hand lifted in the room. And, and I want you just to, just to wait for a moment. And I'm going to invite the Lord. I'm going to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. When I do, you're going to sense the warmth, the peace the breath of life come on you. And you're going to sense the Lord because He changes everything when He comes. Heavenly Father, today we're here, hungry again, as children, not as beggars, as children. So I invite your presence here. I invite you, Holy Spirit, to touch the hungry, Come and fill this room with your glory. And touch them. Let them never forget you. Now don't look at me because I'm I'm I'm, I'm just I'm just like you. I want you to close your eyes and see the Lord high and lifted up. My Father, just begin to touch. you're going to do this morning. Thank you for what you're already doing this morning. I give you praise. How many of you sensed the Lord? How many of you sensed the Lord in this room? Okay, now that, that sense of the Lord, that's the Lord. Now it's your job just to try to make best friends with the Lord. Okay? So come on, lift your hands again. Let's pray a prayer together. And I just want you to say amen after this. Let's, in fact, I want you to repeat after me. Father, I'm here. I'm available. I've come to worship you. I want to love you more when I leave today than I did when I walked in. And I want to be your best friend. And I want to love you more than anybody has ever loved you. I want to love you more than the person next to me loves you. <laughs> In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we give him praise? Come on. All right, go back to your seats there for a second. I want to thank Pastor John for 
working so hard. Can we give him just a huge thank you? Mr. Fish, you'll stay close. Man, girl, you can sing. Wow. I liked your little Pentecostal dance, too. You did a little step forward and all. That was so good. Yeah. And you're wearing Nikes. Both of y'all, huh? Good. You'll need them today. Wasn't last night amazing? What, what, um, can I have somebody up? Who can help me? Oh, there's John. Well, just when I needed to have some fun. Come here, John. Come here, buddy. Can we get John a mic? This is John Needham. They're part of a great church down in Houston called The Dwelling Place. And uh, John was catching all night last night. So how you doing, buddy? Feeling good this morning? Feeling well. <laughs> John's an interesting guy, but we won't go there today. Um, come on down here with me. So um, raise your hand if God just completely wrecked you last night. Raise your hand. Come here. Can you come? I want to hear about it. All right. Um, it was just so amazing. It was like, <laughs> my friend texted me last night and they were like, what was it like when Michael Culliano laid hands on you? And I was like, dude, I just felt like this presence just like flow all over me. Wow. It was so Can awesome. you explain it? Like what, what? I have no idea. Um, I started just like, God was just telling me how much he's missed me. He just wow. wants me to come back to him. And he wants my relationship with him to just grow and grow. Wow. And he was just telling me how, he's like, I want you to know how good I am. It was just, it was awesome. Did, um, wow. So he, he, yeah, come on. So he, he, he spoke to you that he missed you. Yeah. Wow. You know, Jesus has that side to him. And maybe the Jesus that you grew up with didn't have feelings, didn't feel pain. You know, maybe he was like Robocop. <laughs> um, maybe he was mean. Maybe you found a, or grew up with a Jesus who was waiting on you to screw up so he could penalize you. That's not the nature of Jesus. He's not like that. And there's this side of the Lord that really misses us because he's married to us. I'm going to say that again. Um, anyone? I don't think there's too many married people in this room. <laughs> But is there anyone married in this room? Okay, is that where all the parents are? Are all of you parents back there? Oh, you poor parents, you're far away. They got you way back there. Maybe we'll come after you today. Does that sound good? Because I have a feeling if the parents are up here, you're hoping to get rocked too. Is that right? Yeah, I figured. You're kind of like me. So there's this side of Jesus that really misses us. And when we spend time with him, we actually bring something to him that feeds his heart. That it's a beautiful, beautiful experience with the Lord. So that's incredible. What's your name? I'm Abby. Abby, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. I pray he gives you more. Say, we love you, Abby. Love you, Abby. Yeah, anyone else? I want to get a few more. Come, come forward, yeah. I'll come to this side in a second. What's your name? Um, I'm Marissa. Where are you from? <laughs> Leander, Texas. Oh, We're going to move down here. It's like near Cedar Park. Okay. Not, not, it's a really small town. A lot of people know about it. Okay. Live there. What happened last night? Um, so I used to struggle with like self-harm and um, not a lot of people knew about it. It was something I was extremely ashamed of. And um, Like what, cutting? Yes. Okay. And um, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm good. No, you're good. Um, and um, I just... I hated myself and the scars that covered my body and I just wanted them to go away because I hated waking up every single morning with this reminder that at some point in my life I didn't think I was good enough and I didn't I didn't want to, to be here where wow. I felt like I was just hated by every single person that I met and I've been praying for a really long time that my scars will go away but I don't think I ever fully trusted that God was going to take them away. And so last night, um, I kept praying. I was like begging God, like, please, just, just take them away. I'll do, I will do anything. Just make them go away. And I felt like he was saying, like, you don't have to beg me. You don't, I'm, I'm not a master. I'm your father. Mm. And 
this just, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it's like whenever you, you're near the edge of a building and you're looking down and it's like, you're all shaking. You're like, oh, I could fall. I could like, I could die. And then you like step back and like, you're a little dizzy, but it's like, I'm safe. I'm okay. And that's how it was for me last night. And my scars are still here, but I know now that God is going to take them away. And yeah. I don't know when, but he's going to do it. We're going to believe God today to take this away. Okay. Wow. So how do you feel now? I'm numb again. <laughs> yeah. A good numb. Yeah. A little shaky. What, why are you, why do you, why are you shaking? I don't know. <laughs> what, what do you think's happening? I think the Spirit's hitting me again. Yeah. That's the power of God. It's, and we react to that. Isn't that awesome? You know when the, yeah, yeah. So check this out. You might be saying, why is he starting um, this morning like, you know, the way he is? It's because every time we share a testimony, the Hebrew word for testimony actually means to do it again. So every time we share a testimony, it's not God trying to parade somebody else's encounter before you and God saying, you'll never have what they have. They're special. You're not. A testimony is actually God saying, I'm back in the room to do exactly what I did in her for you if you will celebrate what I'm doing in her. Are you hearing me? So you can judge a testimony. You can criticize a testimony. Maybe you don't like her because she's shaking a little bit. Maybe you don't think she's balanced. God's not into balance. You know what God's church, his opening church meeting was? The upper room. So to God, that was really balanced. People so touched by the Lord that the world thought they were drunk. So that's how God would launch a church. Today we launch it with um, cappuccinos, and which are great. Just I had one this morning. So <laughs> I'm just saying, get the Holy Spirit and have your cappuccino in the presence of God. So here she is being touched by the Lord. And a few things come our way. A few thoughts that are fallen thought patterns. They're not the renewed mind. Those fallen thought patterns are, I'll never have that because she's special. What's your name again? Marissa. Marissa must have been born with a halo over her bassinet and she's just super special and she's probably like, no, there was no halo, just, just Marissa there. We, that's how we tend to think. We think we're disqualified. We're not special. Or we judge it and criticize it and that disqualifies us from the encounter until we repent. But the right way to think about this testimony is this. God is here in the room touching her. He loves me the same way he loves her. God wants to touch me this morning. And if I celebrate what he's doing in her, I'm actually signing up for a fresh experience with Jesus. So come on, let's give the Lord praise for what he's doing in Marissa. Yeah. So amazing. How do you feel right now? Just filled with joy. Like, that's so really cool. happy. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. I want to take some more. Come on. So wonderful. Yeah, what happened? Come on. Okay, so um, I knew what I had done. I had made a plan for my life, and I said, God, I want to do this. He's, so he, when I got prayed for, I just saw plans for my life, and they were not my plans. <laughs> That's not the plan I planned out. And the Lord said, you had to kill your plan before I showed you my plan. And so he just showed me everything from my life and just flashes and visions, and then... The last um, night he did? Yeah. Yeah. Um, while I was here. Were you on the floor? Yes. Okay. So while you were on the floor, yes. God started talking to you. All yes. right. And then um, it was really peaceful. And then like my body felt like it was just so exhausted. And like my muscles were shaking. Like I was carrying something really heavy. And he was like, now you're carrying your cross. Wow. Wow. So wonderful. How do you feel this morning? Amazing. <laughs> were you shaking in bed last night? Yes. Wow. Incredible. Man. You know, when the Lord, actually, you guys may not know this. Thank you. It's so beautiful. Thank you. Um, yeah, just stay with me, John. You just stand there and look really smooth. <laughs> um, when the Lord touched Todd, um, it was on an Israel tour. I don't know if Kurt's here. 
Oh, so my father-in-law, Pastor Benny, used to host these Israel tours. Kurt, what was the biggest tour we ever had? 1, yeah, 1,500 people we took. We had to baptize them all in the River Jordan. I think that was an April tour, wasn't it? If you've ever been in the Jordan in April, it's freezing cold. And um, so I had to baptize people with my father-in-law and Kurt and a few other guys. And we were all shivering. I remember our lips were all blue. But my father-in-law was like, you know, his hair was perfectly combed to the side, like it always is, and nice and hairsprayed. And he was just like, isn't this wonderful? And I'm like, man, how is he? I know him. He hates cold rooms. He, he, he's so particular with the temperature. And I was like, what is the deal? And I looked under his white baptismal robe. He had a wetsuit on. <laughs> and that's why he was enjoying it so much. But on one of those tours, Todd, Todd that year had, had just gotten saved. Yeah, you can sit. Just make sure you look professional. Um, Todd had just gotten saved, had no money. And a guy offered to pay for Todd's Israel trip and he had no clue about Benny Hinn Ministries. He had no clue about anything. But he came and he was hungry. And it was funny because he was tell telling everybody on the bus about Jesus, but they were already born again. And that's what Todd does. Like, that's why I don't even tell Todd when we do events together which hotel room I'm in. Because he'll want to stay up all night sharing his testimony with me for the thousandth time. <laughs> so actually in Switzerland... Uh, we did an event with Heidi and a few others, Heidi Baker, and we flew in on separate flights and I knew we were at the same hotel and I purposely didn't tell Todd which room I was in because I wanted to wait on the Lord and be with the Lord. So there I am, this beautiful view of the mountains and I'm waiting on Jesus and I hear a guitar and like an like a Aerosmith voice in the room next to me. And all I hear is I'm in like this beautiful place with the Lord, silence, looking at a mountain. I hear, Jesus! And I go, oh God, he's next door. <laughs> so somehow he found out, he found out that I had landed and gotten there. And our hotel, literally, I'm, I'm, this is the truth, I'm not exaggerating. Our hotel was built into a mountain in Switzerland. And if you fall off the balcony, you die. You don't like have a bad day and go to the hospital. You die. And so I'm there in my room and, and I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, pray quietly because I don't want Todd to hear me. And, and I didn't answer his text. <laughs> so anyhow, I see a guy out of the corner of my eyes walking on the balcony ledge looking through my balcony. So what he did is he went out his balcony, climbed the balcony ledge, risked his life to get to me. <laughs> and then I just see these dreadlocks come around the corner and go, bro, it's you, you're here. And I was like, oh man. So what did he do? He sat down and shared his testimony with me. But anyways, on that Israel trip, on that Israel trip, um, we baptized people, and, and uh, Pastor Benny uh, had a healing service on the Sea of Galilee. It's called the Galilee Experience, right, Kurt? And it's an amazing place. And so he calls all the pastors down to get prayer, which was pretty typical in those days. He, he, he really loved to play for, pray for pastors. And... Todd was like, I'm a pastor, I'm in the ministry, which he wasn't. Well, he was in the ministry, but he was just hungry. And he actually told Kurt that God spoke to him that he was supposed to sit in the front row, which who knows, even if he's wrong, I applaud the hunger. So he came forward and Pastor Rennie called him out and prayed for him. And Todd looked like he got assassinated by a 30 odd six and went flying through the air. He probably prayed for him three or four times. And then he flew off the platform onto the front row and shook under the power of God. That night, they basically had to carry him into his room and laid him down on the bed, and he shook all night in bed. And he said he could feel God adjusting him and filling him with power. And the rest is history. Look how God is using Todd around the world. So, all that to say... Some of the people, in fact, all of the people you look up to 
have encounters in their history or they would have nothing to give you. I'm going to say that again. I can only give you what I have. So no encounter, no voltage, no juice, nothing to give. Now listen, authority comes from what Jesus paid for. Every believer has authority. And authority, I love the way Bill Johnson explains it. Authority is the badge. It's the badge. It's the policeman's badge. But the policeman has more than a badge. He also has a gun (laughs) that enforces what that badge says. In other words, if you don't respect the policeman and break the law, he's got something on his hip that enforces the law that that badge stands for. That pistol is called power. That badge is called authority. Power enforces the authority. In other words, the scriptures, the law written on our heart says this, as many as touched him were made whole. Our law, the scriptures, teach us that there were none feeble among them. Speaking of Israel, under the old covenant. When they left Egypt, Nobody was sick. Not one of them. I want you to think that in 40 years of being in the desert, not one of their shoes broke down. No shoes, no holes in their feet. The young kids, as they grew, their shoes grew with them. Amazing. God was their healing. He was their divine health. That's what the Bible teaches. So when sickness pops up in your family, listen, that is violating the badge. It is violating what has been written. Because the Bible says that he wishes above all things that we prosper and be in, come on, y'all need to know your Bible, be in good health even as your soul prospers. That's what the Bible teaches. So when sickness pops up, when cutting pops up, when self-hatred pops up, when depression, when fear, when anxiety pops up, that is mocking the badge. It's super stupid to mock a police officer. It's just dumb. Why? He's got something on his hip that could give you a bad day. And that's why he's got it there. We should have something on the hip of our spirit. It's called power. Power. Say power. Power. The Bible says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You need to say thank you, Jesus. Because I feel him right now, even as I'm talking about it. You will receive power. What's that power do? It says this. Devil, you violate the badge of the scriptures. I've got a gun on my hip. And I love how Bill says it. He says, I only focus on the devil long enough to put him in my scopes and take a shot. You need power. But the power comes from a person. So when you hear these power testimonies, they are vital. They are vital. Because now everybody with a testimony has something to give away. Now today I'm going to talk to you about the Holy Spirit. Yesterday... Blood was poured out on the altar of your heart. You were washed, made clean. How many of you feel brand new this morning? Isn't that amazing? Look at this, guys. Lift your hands again. I want to see that. Come on, we need to give Jesus praise. This is the greatest miracle. Come on. We need to give him praise. So incredible. So blood has been poured on the altar of your heart. You you have not been changed. You have been replaced. God has actually replaced himself with you and you with him. That is an incredible miracle. Now he wants to pour fire on your heart. He wants to pour oil on your heart. And this morning, your hands are going to become healing hands. Right here in this room. Right here in the room. This morning, we're going to see miracles. And guess what? They're not going to just flow through me. They're going to flow through you. Because you qualify. I have seen Muslims who who didn't even know the Lord walk up to me. One lady walked up to me in India. Listen to this. She, she was wearing a Muslim garb. She was covered. 
she came up to me. She said, I need to talk to you. I said, why? We were having a crusade there with my father-in-law. I said, what do you need to talk about? She said, a man in white just appeared to me. He told me his name is Jesus of Nazareth. Can you tell me about him? I go, what? She goes, oh yeah. And when he walked up to me, my son who was crippled, my three-year-old boy, he came in on a stretcher. He stood to his feet when this man called Jesus of Nazareth showed up. And the boy was standing there. She goes, can you tell me about this Jesus of Nazareth who just got my boy off this mat? So the Lord, the Lord is, the, we, don't, we don't heal the sick because, because uh, we are forcing God or demanding something. Jesus heals the sick because he loves people. He loves people. And Jesus doesn't heal the sick only through superstars. He heals the sick through those that are his. Now, there are certain things that will release that flow in your life and certain things that resist it. Now, some of you might be sitting there thinking, this is not important to me. This isn't what I came for. How many of you have someone sick in your life, either you or somebody else? How many of you have somebody who, who, in your life who has cancer or some type of... Lift your hands if, if that's... That giant's got to fall. I'm going to say that again. That giant has to fall. Can, can I say it again so someone in here would be radical enough to go after it and stop bowing to that stuff? That giant of cancer has to fall. Has to fall. I need, I need someone here who thinks that it's wrong for a disease that did not come from God to rob somebody's life. Something in you has got to stir up and say, wait, this is wrong. This is not something we settle for and call it God's will. God is making me more. Cancer doesn't make you holy. It doesn't make you feel better. You don't feel the presence of God more when sickness comes. I fought sickness. That's how I came into the kingdom. I, I was sick. And my father-in-law called me out of a crowd when I was 12 years old. I had Epstein-Barr's disease. And I got healed. Yeah. At Epstein-Barr's disease, I got healed, and I never knew I was sick again. How many of you, anyone here have Epstein-Barr's? Anybody in your body? Because we've been seeing a lot of that. Okay. So someone here this morning, something has to swell up in you. You have to come to the place in your life where you say, look, either God is real or he's not. Either the scriptures are true or they're not. And if he's real... I want him to work through me. I don't want to be known for whose meetings I've attended. I don't want my tombstone to say, I, um, you know, whatever your name is, John Smith. Uh, and then on your tombstone it reads, he went to Michael and Todd's meeting. What kind of legacy is that? Jesus didn't die so that your life story would be you attended somebody's meeting. Let something happen in the meeting. Let God provoke you. Let God stir you up so that you, like David, will look at all of Israel and go, why are we letting Goliath mock us? What are we doing? How is he challenging the God of Israel? Just give me a rock and a slingshot. I'll take care of him. That's what we need. We need people who actually believe that the real Jesus lives in them and actually flows out of their hands when their hands touch the sick. You say, this is radical. I touched on that last night. That's the only Jesus I know. He's super radical. You have to be pretty radical to walk on water. You have to be pretty radical to float back to heaven. <laughs> And say goodbye to your church. It's pretty incredible. It's pretty radical stuff. So today I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit. Because he's the one. He is the one who flows through us. Okay? Uh, do we have those books? Did they come up here? Okay. How many people here have something wrong with their body that they would... You're sick in any way. And you want it to go. You may have stubbed your toe this morning. That qualifies. Can you wave though? Just so I can see. I just want to see how many people in each section. Wonderful. So, 
Um, who was not here again this morning? Who was not here again last night? Who was not here last night? Sorry. Okay. For those of you who were not here last night, we're having a conference here in Dallas called Jesus Dallas. It's myself, Todd, Upper Room, Lou Engel, Daniel Kalenda, Mike Miller from Upper Room, Peter Lewis from Upper Room. It's going to be an incredible time. Rita Springer will be leading worship. She's, for those of you who don't know her, you sing a lot of her songs. Upper Room obviously is being used around the world. So I want you guys, if you, if you want to register, you can go to JesusDallas.com. JesusDallas.com. We're giving everybody here a $25 discount, which we've never done before. And the code is Jesus18.com. Jesus18.com. Or you can come to the table, and I'll be at the table when we're done. As soon as we're done ministering here, I'm going straight down to our resource table in the resource section. Come meet me there. I'd love to meet you guys. You can register there. We'll have tablets so that you can uh, register and um, and I'd love to meet you, but it's going to be insane. You guys need to come. It's going to be a historic time birthing revival in America. Did you guys hear my dream that I shared last night about the whirlwinds? Well, come get in it, okay? And also, Jesus School begins August 30th. If you want to, if you want to uh, come show your life at the feet of Jesus with our crew, the greatest voices in the world, come for a year in Orlando. Plus, you have Disney World. Which, <laughs> which, which, which I stay away from because it's too hot. But come down to Orlando. All right. Now, say Holy Spirit. Close your eyes. Fish, can you help me please, buddy? Say Holy Spirit. I'm here. I'm open. And I, I want you to touch me this morning. I want to know you and I want you to flow through me this morning because people need help and I, I, I want to help but I need you in Jesus name Amen do you believe that? Amen. say Amen okay so the the Holy Spirit, just stay with me a little bit, David. The Holy Spirit is um, misunderstood. He's, he's not experienced uh, enough. But he's the one who makes Jesus real to us. Jesus is always real. Make that clear. But the Holy Spirit is the one who comes daily, constantly really, and says, I want to tell you about the one I love. His name is Jesus. It is impossible to know Jesus without the Holy Spirit. It's impossible. And it is impossible, according to Jesus, to know the Father unless you meet Jesus. So the Holy Spirit, He's first on the scene. He's like SEAL Team 6 or Delta Force. They are in long before anybody knows they're in. And by the time you find out they're there, you're in trouble if they're coming after you. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is the first one to arrive in a situation and begin to shift it. And that's why atmosphere is so important. That's why, that's why David Bish is playing right now. It's not because I want my message to be more palatable. It's not because I'm hoping that it creates an ambiance. It's because he is ministering to the Lord right now. It looks like he's just playing. He's not just playing. He's ministering to the Lord. He's loving the Lord through his gift. And as he ministers to the Lord, the Lord comes. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you come to a place where you receive what you enjoy? Are you hearing me? 
There is more worship in heaven than preaching. Oh, that one. Some of you Bible teachers, you got mad at that one. Let me tell you something. Your teaching makes a difference in His glory. That's where your teaching sticks. Never forget that. In heaven, there is 24-7 worship. So Jesus prayed a prayer. He said, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in When we minister to the Lord, we join what heaven is doing and what happens. Heaven comes. Jesus loves to be worshipped. It's not because he's prideful. It's because his heart is moved. And when you touch his heart, listen, when you touch his heart, he'll move his hand. Write that down. When I touch his heart, he will move his hand. My daughter, she knows how to get stuff out of me. She's a master at it. and she's, already, she's only six years old. What is it, is it about you women, especially you daughters who know how to mess your dads up? She knows I'll say no for a week and then at some point she'll come sit on my knee or I just bought her a little ukulele and she'll sit on my couch in the master and cross her little legs with her long dark curly hair she looks like she looks exactly like I, I wanted my daughter to look she's got me wrapped little almond shaped eyes dark skin she's beautiful and she'll sit there on my sofa in our master bedroom and she'll grab the ukulele cross her legs and just start playing she only knows one chord and usually she screws that one up and she'll start singing songs. Sometimes they're Christian, sometimes they're secular. Not like bad songs, but you know, like a nursery rhyme song. So she'll start playing it and then it melts me. Then she'll walk up to me and go, Baba, can you take me to the store and get me that whatever? And I had said no for six days. Man, she plays that song. Rubs my heart the right way. I go, of course, baby. We'll go tomorrow. Now you say, man, God's not like that. Oh, God's very much like that. Before, first and foremost, God is a father. He is a father. And there are certain people who can move the hand of God. Listen. And certain people who don't. Even in the body of Christ. Even amongst leaders, man. I've got about five guys when something goes wrong. And women that I call when it's really bad, there's five, maybe less, and I know a lot of people. But who am I looking for? The ones who have a clear connection. The ones who know how to talk to the Lord, and the Lord seems to move more consistently through them than others. When you learn to touch the heart of Jesus, He will move His hand. And so fish is playing there, and we don't see what's happening. What's actually happening is he's ministering to the Lord. And the Lord's going, and you, can, you felt the shift in the room, right? When he started playing. The shift took place because Jesus is here. You say he's always here. He is always here. But he reveals himself in a deeper measure when he's worshipped. So the Holy Spirit comes our way every day. And he says this, whether it's in the morning whether you're walking, whether you're in school, and he nudges your heart. And he just says, hey, I'm here. When that happens, we have a few choices. One is to say, oh, that's great, Lord. I'm glad you're here. And you keep going. And typically, amazingly, that's what we do. Because we don't take a moment to realize who's nudging us talking about the God of the ages trying to get our attention it's a big deal now a few people say oh Lord it's you I will give you my attention and as you give him your attention this is what he says I will give you more of my presence 
because I can trust you with me. How many of you boys here currently like a girl? And don't keep your hands down. Anyone here like a girl? It's allowed, guys. That's what we want. Okay, good. Some of you boys are like, that one right there. Uh, wait a few years and you can marry her. All right? We'll have a bunch of weddings here in the college and career service one day. This is a great place to at least look at your wife. <laughs> We try to get the attention of the person that, uh, that, that, that we love. If you're married, you want to get the person's attention. And that person wants to get your attention, hopefully. And what they do is, is they give you a little, a little clue. Like for women, let me give you an example. I heard this joke the other day. <laughs> it's so funny. Bill Johnson shared it. It was so funny. Okay, it was, this is a joke, women. Don't get mad. We're in Texas, so I feel like I can just be more real. Uh, it was a woman astronaut, a female astronaut. And um, she said... <laughs> she got on her radio, whatever they use when they're up in space, and she said, Houston, we have a problem. And the command center said, what's the problem? And she said, Nothing. They're like, huh? What's the problem? Never mind. <laughs> they said, no, no, really. What's the problem? Forget about it. <laughs> Anyone married knows exactly what I'm talking about. Your wife, did she start treating you a little different? Is there anything going on? Nothing. Really, why won't you look at me? For nothing. <laughs> the Lord is constantly trying to get our attention. And what happens is we don't value Him. So the Lord doesn't leave us. But the Lord begins to trust us less with the nudge. And so while you're looking for tumors to disappear, which you should be, you're looking to raise the dead you don't realize that the seed of that life of raising the dead and healing the sick is the nudge. Are you hearing me? You think it's just a nudge. But when the Lord says, come away and be with me, you don't realize he's inviting you into a life of miracles. The seed is the nudge. The harvest is everything you're dreaming of. But you got to be with Jesus to know Jesus. A girl came up to me last night. She looked me square in the eye at the book table. She said, how can I know Jesus? I said, you got to be with him. You got to be with him. So statistics would tell me this, that uh, one in three of you are looking at porn consistently. That wouldn't make this room any different. So one in three of you. That means uh, three people on each row here are looking at porn. And you're hiding it. Now, you could say, no, no, not here. I, I, we just started a, a ministry school. And so we, we ask some very direct questions. And the people that come to our school are like people who are, have a call to like give everything. They're ready to die for Jesus. Even in that context, this thing is running rampant. This thing is like a cancer because it's right there on your phone. You know, 20 years ago, you had to go to a store. Today, you can just turn your phone on. You can get on Instagram. Some of you girls and guys, some of your pages need to get toned down a little bit. I wouldn't let my kids look at some of your pages, to be honest with you. So, this thing's readily available. It's a cancer. All of a sudden... The devil comes in and says, man, you're going to be, this is just who you are. You're going to deal with this. This is your life. You're going to be, you're going to struggle. You're going to be bound. Let me tell you something right now. You spend time with Jesus every day. You'll get free and you won't even know it. You'll get free. You will get free and that garbage will look like what it is. Complete garbage. I can tell you since 2003, when I gave my full all to Jesus to serve him, 
I haven't struggled with lust. I haven't, nothing. 15 years of complete freedom and addiction for Jesus. But the secret to defeating your sin is you spending time with Jesus. The secret is not you fighting your sin. You spend a life fighting your sin, you will strengthen your sin. Because your attention is the fuel of the spiritual life. Okay, you ready? I'll try this. Don't think of a purple elephant right now. All of you thought of a purple elephant. The promise, hear me, the promises of God are yes and amen. Not no and fight. My yes to Jesus by default gives me a no to everything that is not Jesus. Are you telling me to not fight? I'm telling you this. Look at Jesus and he'll destroy your sin. How many of you, nobody here is struggling with lust during a beautiful worship song? Why? Your attention is fixed on him. It's when your attention leaves the Lord that the devil comes in and throws something your way. And next time that happens, this is what you're going to do. Instead of spending all your time trying to do the right thing, you're going to worship Jesus. And by default, that garbage is going to die behind you. Are you hearing me? So the Holy Spirit, he comes on the scene. And he looks at a situation that is, that is not of the Lord. And he begins to reign his presence on that situation. If you have a hard heart, if you struggle with fear, depression, the Holy Spirit comes and he begins to water the soil. He, 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 he begins to release his presence on the soil of your heart. Once that begins to happen, God then begins to speak. And that's why when the world was created, the Bible says the Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the deep. It was formless and void and dark. And the Holy Spirit began to hover. And then God spoke. As I begin to live a life of friendship with the Holy Spirit, God begins to speak to me. And once God speaks, according to the book of Genesis, there is light. He said, let there be light. That light is the light of God. And I begin to see the Lord more clearly. I begin to see why he created me and I'm set free. So the Holy Spirit, listen, is not a side issue. The Holy Spirit is as much God as Jesus and the Father. I also want to say this. You know me. I love Jesus. I mean, I'm a Jesus like fanatic. I, I can't change the dial. I can't change the subject. I love him. But I'm aware of something. I only love Jesus because of the Holy Spirit. Because he loves Jesus. Because he loves Jesus. So, as I begin to walk with the Holy Spirit, I'm actually walking with the Spirit of Jesus. So here's the deal. Jesus said to his disciples, he said this, he said, he said, I'm going to go away. Now I want you guys, I want you guys to think about this for a moment. Here you are walking with the Son of God. He's doing things you didn't even think existed or that were even available. And now he looks at you and goes, hey, I'm going away. And here's the good news. It's best that I do go. How many of you would, agree, would, would say, if Jesus, if you walked with him for three and a half years, he changed your life, and then all of a sudden he said, I'm leaving and it's best I go. How many of you would say, what? How is it best that you go? Yeah, you'd all be like, no, don't go. But Jesus said, it's best that I go. But then he said to them, don't worry. Don't worry because I'm sending a comforter, another comforter. And that word another means he's just like me. It doesn't mean different. It's a bad translation. He actually said, I'm sending someone who is just like me. 
So don't let the Holy Spirit freak you out, guys. The Holy Spirit is just like Jesus. If you want to imagine him this way, he's like Jesus without the flesh. He's like Jesus with no body. He's, he's here, he is spirit, but he's just like Jesus. So he says, don't worry. I will send another comforter. And this is what he'll do. Listen closely. He will speak of me. He will remind you of everything I ever told you. How many of you have been put in a situation and all of a sudden scripture started coming out of your mouth that you didn't even know was there? How many of you ever had that happen? And when it was over, you said, I didn't even know I knew that. I read that like five years ago. How'd that happen? It's the Holy Spirit. He brings back to your remembrance everything Jesus said. But if you're going to remember what Jesus said, you have to discover what Jesus said, which means you've got to get in the Word. You've got to give your life to the Word. You've got to give your life to the Scriptures. If you could never read it, you have nothing to remember. So he says, he will remind you of everything I said. And listen, and he will tell you of things to come. That sounds pretty amazing to me. How many of you would be, like to be a step ahead of the game? That when the world is freaking out, you know it's coming because the Holy Ghost is talking to you. My wife is like a radar. But in the Greek culture, they say that man is the head, but the wife's the neck. The, the neck can turn the head any way she wants. Isn't that true? And the people said, Amen. Something about wives, man. They, they can turn their husband's head any way they want. But my wife prophetically has this gift where she dreams just about nightly. And I make major ministry decisions based on many times what God is giving her in dreams. Not like little stuff, like should I go to Whole Foods or Trader Joe's? No, I mean like should I hire this person or go to that city? Should we not go to that nation? Because God's speaking to my wife. He will show her what will happen with people and cities and ministries. Man, that's huge. All of you have the capability and the invitation to hear the Holy Spirit. You'll stop going to the news for your news. You'll start going to the Lord. you start going to the Lord. And then Jesus said this to his disciples. He said, You know him. Because he is with you. Now, listen closely. Look, look, look at me, please. When Jesus walked the earth, when Jesus was here on earth, did the Holy Spirit live inside the disciples? Yes or no? No. How is it that the disciples knew the Holy Spirit? How is it that he was with the disciples if he was not in them because he was in and on Jesus and as long as they were with Jesus they could have a relationship with the Holy Spirit but when Jesus was taken back to glory there was an issue there Jesus had to send the Holy Spirit to come live in the disciples so then Jesus said this don't worry. He is with you and he shall be in you. Say thank you God. So the moment you get saved, Jesus is no longer just with you by the Holy Spirit. He comes to live in you by the Holy Spirit. In you. And here's the beauty of that. That no matter what you say to me, no matter what you think of me, no matter what they think of you, no matter what people say, no matter what social media, no matter what you're doing, whether you have money or you don't, that fountain never moves. Nobody can separate you from the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you. Whether you're flipping burgers at in and out or preaching downstairs in the main auditorium, each person can have an experience with the Holy Spirit. He is there to stay. And He will be there forever, even in heaven. That's good news, isn't it? 
Lastly, Jesus made another promise. And this is what I want to talk about right now. Because you received the indwelling of the Holy Spirit last night. When all of you got saved and gave your life to Jesus last night, your, your body, your actual body, under this Star Wars shirt, your actual body became the house of the Holy Spirit. I want you to touch, touch your arms. Say, this is God's house. Right here. Where you love your body or you hate it, don't hate it. God lives in there. He finds it fit to live there. He's okay with you. So Paul said it like this. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Haven't you realized that your actual body has become the house of God? God lives there. <laughs> Somebody better get happy here because that is amazing. I'm telling you, you, need to, you know what? You need to give the Lord praise for that. Come on, give Him praise. It's amazing. It's amazing. Now, that Holy Spirit some of you are like, man, I wanted to get fried today and get rocked like I did last night. You might, but this is very important because when you leave, my prayer is that you're left with a relationship with the Lord, a real relationship. Now, that indwelling that happens when you get saved, remember, he said he'll be with you. When he's with you, he leads you to the cross. Before you're born again, he's with you. Remember, who's first on the scene? Holy Spirit. What's his job? He takes you and says, that's Jesus. So imagine him holding your hand. He walks you to Calvary. You see this cross, Christ crucified, and the Holy Spirit goes, he's the one. At that point, you have a right, a free will to say yes or no. I highly advise that you say yes. And at that point, you say, oh, he's the son of God. He died for my sin. He is who he says he is. And you receive by faith what he accomplished on the cross and in his resurrection. At that point, he comes to live inside of you. So the Holy Spirit is with you. When you say yes to Jesus, he comes in you. And that's awesome. <laughs> However, the Lord knows and you know. How many of you have family members who, who need to meet Jesus? Okay, I'm going to give you the secret right now. And trust me, it works. If those family members or friends are going to meet the Lord who lives in you, he's got to get on you. He's got to get on you. So he's with me, comes to live in me. But if he's going to live in some other people, he's got to get on me. On me. And when he gets on me, power begins to flow in my life. Now, power is not a recommendation. It is a promise. You need the gun to back up the badge. So Jesus said this. Everything's got to match the word. Jesus said, you will receive power after that, this Acts 1.8, the Holy Spirit comes on you. You'll receive the gun. You'll receive the Glock. You'll receive the Glock 40 when the power comes on you. And that power is for other people who are being assaulted by those who mock the badge, by the devil and his minions. Well, Jesus is saying, I don't want you to walk around with the badge. I want you to have a badge and a gun. The moment he comes in you, you get your badge. That's your authority. The moment he comes on you, now you've got a weapon. And that weapon works. It worked last night. It'll work this morning. Say amen. Now, how, why is that so important? I, I, I love this. And I, I quote Bill a lot because he's like Yoda. Bill, Bill, Bill says it like this. He is in me for me and on me for you. In me for me, on me for you. He's in me for my fellowship. I can close my eyes 
and say, Jesus, I love you. And that internal presence begins flowing. Jesus said, like a river, like a spring, and I would never thirst again, and it would bubble up. That fountain never moves. But if that fountain is going to find its way in you, I need him to clothe me and get on me. That is what we call the anointing and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said he would take you as the baptizer and as John the Baptist took people and threw them under the river, under the water in the river Jordan, that Jesus would take your heart and thrust you because he baptizes in the Holy Spirit and fire. Imagine a river of fire. He will take you and thrust you into a river of fire. Now Jesus is in you, on you, and all around you. No different than putting a cucumber in vinegar and salt and it becomes a pickle. He'll change you. And you won't be normal. How many of you are tired of being normal? Uh, normal is really boring. Average is really boring. Say average is lame. No, Jesus will change you. And this is what will happen. That power will begin to flow. When you talk, come here, John. Come here, grab your mic. That power, I want you guys to get ready now because God's about to use you, all of you. That power will begin to flow. When you speak, when your hands touch people, I want you to look down at your hands and say, these are loaded. Oh, they are. Because Jesus said, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. He didn't say you'll headbutt the sick. You'll, you know, belly bump the sick. He made it real easy. He said, here's what you do. You'll put your hands on the sick with the understanding that when my hands touch the sick, power flows through my hands. I'm not there to like touch people. I'm there to do a job. You guys are going to go to work today. You're going to do a job. It's so easy because it's not based on your resume. It's based on Jesus' resume. You're going to take your hands. I think we can all do that. And, and, and you, Jesus said, you're going to put them on the sick. And the moment you put your hands on the sick and say, be healed in Jesus' name, according to the word of God, a reversal takes place immediately. He said, they will recover. So that means that something or someone actually, actually, not symbolically, actually flows through my hands. So how many of you felt power last night when, when you got prayed for? Why? It's not my hands. It's the one flowing through my hands. So Jesus said like this, you'll put your hands on the sick and power will begin to flow. But that's not where it ends as you become closer with the Holy Spirit. As you become closer with the Holy Spirit, He'll start to do stuff even when you're not trying. But He wants to trust you enough to actually use your hands, to actually use the Word of God. He, he's after faith in you, and that's where we begin. But there is a place of such oneness with the Lord that the Lord will start doing stuff as a reward. <laughs> I heard somebody call him Jehovah Sneaky once. He, he's like that. He loves to surprise us as we're faithful. So if he can't trust you to go, hey man, can I put my hand on your shoulder and pray for that? If he can't trust you to do that, it's hard for him to give you more. But once I show him, I'll, I'll do even if I look like an idiot because God's okay with me looking like an idiot. In fact, sometimes I think he likes it. Nowhere on God's priority list is how cool you look when he touches you. He doesn't give a rip. God isn't going, I'd really like to touch Josh here. I'd really like to touch Gray. But when I touch them, I just got to make sure that they keep their, you know, they have to be intact. I mean, I can't have Josh looking not cool. He needs to get married. So I don't want girls to think he's weird. That's not on God's list. God's like, I'm going to touch them. Everybody reacts differently. I think God kind of likes it when we put ourselves out there. We're not healing them. Jesus is healing them. Throw the pitch. Throw the pitch. Let Jesus hit it. Jesus will hit any pitch you throw. You say, man, I've got to throw a heater straight down the pipe. No, you don't have to throw a heater straight down the pipe. You can throw in the backstop. 
Jesus can hit it. The Bible says his arm is not short. He can hit it in the dirt. He can hit an acorn. Man, throw something. Throw something and he'll hit it. So he begins to use this very practice. He lay hands on the sick. So he sent him out two by two. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Just copy me. Are you with me? But there's a place in the Lord where he'll start healing people by accident. Not his accident, but when you didn't think he wanted to. And so Jesus saw that when the Bible says as many as touched the hem of his garment were made whole. Imagine you walking into Target. You walk in at 3 p.m. You grab the doorknob at Target. You're going in to buy some stuff at 3 p.m. And there's thousands of people going in out of Target. You go in. You buy your stuff. At 6 p.m., a lady with stage 4 cancer comes. She never met you. She'll never know your name. She'll never even know you existed. She's not following you on social media. She doesn't even know you're there. When she grabs that doorknob that you touched, because while you touched the doorknob, you were thinking of Jesus. And when you think of Jesus, he comes and manifests. When she touches the doorknob, she feels something shoot through her body. She goes to the oncologist and stage four cancer is gone. It's just gone. That's what's available. And that's how Jesus, the Bible says, performed more miracles. Listen, listen to the terminology here. Then there is room on the earth to contain the books. Not room, not enough books on earth to contain the testimony. How many of you think the Pacific Ocean is a pretty big bookshelf? Pretty big. How many of you think North America could hold a lot of books? Or Australia or Africa? John said, there's not enough room on the planet to contain the books if I were to count all the miracles Jesus ever performed. How's that happen? Exactly what I'm talking to you about. If from his being flowed this precious power of the Holy Spirit. And, and that's why he looked at the woman with the issue of blood and said, who touched me? Who touched me? Who, who siphoned that power out of my being by faith? So John, come here. So John, <laughs> John heard his, twisted his ankle playing horse, if that's even possible. How do you do that? And um, he heard it pretty bad. And I preached in Houston a couple weeks ago. And um, he didn't show up to church because he hurt his ankle. So tell them what happened. Well, it wasn't horse, it was basketball. We'll, we'll call it okay. horse. Okay. Go ahead. I fell on it wrong. Nobody broke my ankles for the record. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> he was in town. And so he likes to call me and mess with me a lot. So he found out that my ankle was hurt. And... Uh, I decided I was going to mess with him, so I knew which hotel he was staying at, so I snuck up on him, and I came in on crutches, and... Uh, I was eating just before I got on the yeah, flight. Yeah, he was eating yeah. deviled eggs, I believe. Yep, low carb. And uh, I got to him, and we were talking, and he was messing with me. He you told me you weren't going to pray for me, actually. I, I actually, he goes, are you going to pray for me? I go, no, I think you need to feel the pain of this one. Yeah. yeah. You wanted me to endure that trial. And yeah, then, I did. Uh, <laughs> So we're sitting there, and I have this, this cast on, and uh, we're not even really being spiritual at all, actually, and we're just talking, and then you, I heard a loud pop. We all heard uh, it, huh, Josh? Josh was there. You heard the pop at the table. He was just sitting there like this, and you heard pop, and, uh, yeah. and he goes, no, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. What, what went through your mind? Uh, I was... Up, I was, I was hopeful but upset because I knew you'd never let it go. <laughs> I knew you'd hold it over for me forever. But I felt this deep pop in my ankle and uh, and I just... You took the brace off. I just off. knew what happened. It was right there at Houston uh, George Bush Airport. Like right at the airport. Yeah. And then you, you took the brace off. I took it off and I came in uh, on crutches. I couldn't put any weight on it. And uh, instantly I, I was able to raise myself on one foot and I had like full mobility in a second yeah yeah in a second I mean imagine he he came in with crutches 
sat down at lunch. Nobody prayed for him. God healed his foot and he got up and carried his crutches home. That's insane, right? Come on, you can give the Lord praise. So, thank you, buddy. So the waitress, the waitress saw him walk in with, the, you know, on crutches. She saw him 20 minutes later carrying his crutches and she stopped us and she said, wait, whoa, whoa, like, are you a healer or something? I said, no, but Jesus is. And we got to talk to her about the Lord. So here's the deal. Today, sitting next to you, there are issues in people's lives. And uh, I also want to include depression and fear and emotional issues. If you're cutting, if, if you're in, yeah, and I don't want anyone moving right now. And the reason that is, is because distraction really hurts the flow of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said it did. So he said, when you go pray for somebody, don't talk to anybody on the way. In other words, I don't want you to be distracted on the way to do your job. Sitting next to you are cutters. There are people with fear. There are people who are addicted. There are people who are bound. There are people with Crohn's disease, people with stomach issues. There are women here with issues with their cycle and their ovaries and maybe people who've been told they can't have children. We're grateful for doctors. They're amazing. We're all fighting the same war. But the truth of the matter is, Jesus said, if you come to me, I'll answer you. So he's our final authority, right? Say amen. So I want you to realize that after last night, Jesus came into your heart and washed you with the blood. And I prayed that his power last night would come on you. And it did. And so those issues, they might sound big in the eyes of the world, but they're not big to Jesus. They're not big to Jesus. For 45 minutes, the only healing testimony I took at Bethel Cleveland a few months ago, with the exception of, I think, two or three, I'd have to look back at the footage to verify. But for 45 minutes, mostly the only healing miracle testimony we took were tumors or cysts that disappeared, completely vanished, or significantly decreased by like more than 50%. Many underneath our hands, they were just vanishing. Gone, gone, gone. Before that meeting, all I did, like a little child, in my heart, I would picture Jesus standing there as being way bigger and shining like the sun, way bigger than the sickness. Way bigger. So like little kids today, when we pray, that person next to you is going to say, this is my condition that I need healed. Okay? And then you're going to pray with full knowledge that it is Jesus' will to heal them today today right here. You're also going to pray with the core conviction that the minute your hand touches them, that thing turns on its heels and goes the other way. Okay? Even if the symptoms don't immediately vanish, your core conviction is that when my hands touch them, the hands of Jesus is touching them. And Jesus does a good job every time. Okay? Okay, so if you need a healing in your body, I want you to stand. Now I want, um, I want everyone who's sitting to look, to look around. And I want you to find someone near you. And I want at least two people with every person. Okay? Two people with every person. At least. It can be three or four. So I want you to make your way now over to that person who's standing next to you. Come and lead us. Yeah, come. Okay, don't start praying yet. Don't start praying yet. Don't start praying yet. Don't start praying yet. Just stand there next to him. Okay, now close your eyes for a second. Close your eyes. I want to show you how easy it is to walk with the Lord. Don't start praying yet, so take your hands off him. It's okay, I love your fire. You guys are ready to go. That's awesome. Now just lift your hands to heaven, everyone here. Yes, Lord, thank you. Father, I thank you this morning 
that we are not healers, you are. That you're in the room, Lord. I am asking you that you would flow through these young people and that a wave of healing would hit America and their city. I'm asking that this would be a seed of a great healing revival that would flow through our nation to their schools and families. In the name of Jesus, just say this, Holy Spirit, we welcome you in the name of Jesus. How many of you actually feel some type of tingling or heat on your hands? Wave at me if you do. Okay, that's the Lord's anointing. That's the Lord's anointing. So now I want you to ask that person what their need is. Just have them name the condition. I don't want you to give a lot of time to that because I don't want to glorify the devil. Just get the name of the... Parents too, you guys get in on this. Just name your condition. Okay, that should be enough time. Can you pick those keys up? Don't start praying yet. Don't start praying. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yep, he's moving. Okay. Get the name of that condition now and put your hand there on that sickness. You know, if it's in a, a sensitive area, you don't have to. But just get your hand there on them. And like a little kid, I want you to say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke. And then I want you to name that thing and tell it to go. And then say, be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you. Hallelujah. to go. Don't beg. Tell it to go. Don't beg. You just tell it to go. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this room. power flow Jesus Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus be completely healed Glaucoma 
in the name of Jesus. It goes. Stomach issues gone in Jesus' name. Fibroids and cysts leave now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Yes, thank you, Father. Now, come on, guys. I'm telling you, the Lord is moving. The Lord is moving. The Lord is moving. Now, if that's you, if you're receiving prayer, if you're receiving prayer, I want you to begin testing it now. Test it. Get out. Get out. If you have to get out in the aisle, do something. Test it. Test it. If it's your body, feel for a cyst that wasn't there. If you had scars, I want you to check. If you had foot pain or knee pain, something, anything. Test it out. 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 Get. You got to do something you couldn't do before. I want you to get out of. Sometimes that means just getting out of your seat. Yeah, this is awesome. If God, yeah, this is amazing. If God, if God, if God has completely healed you or significantly healed you, I want you to wave your hands. Look at all this. Look at all this. This is wild. This is wild. This is wild. John, I'll need help. I'll need help. Now hold on. How many of you got prayed for and did keep 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 playing? Just sing very softly. How many of you got prayed for and you didn't get your breakthrough? Look how small that number is. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna ask again. Because that's what Jesus did. He prayed for that man. He wasn't healed, so he went at it again. All right, guys, look down at your hands. Everyone, say, Jesus lives in my hands. And Jesus heals the sick very easily. Put your hands on them now. In the name of Jesus. Father, I worship you. Every scar disappearing in Jesus' name. Every scar, every injury, every sickness. Gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Gone in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Blessed Jesus, I worship you. I worship you. In the name of Jesus. Every sickness goes now. In the name of the Lord, every pain, every disease, every issue, leave. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. One more time through. Yeah. Now, if you got prayer, I want you to test it now. Test it now, test it now, test it. If it's your neck, move it in the name of Jesus. Move it. There's the sun back there. If God healed you on the second, on the second prayer, wave your hands. I want to see. If God healed you on the second prayer. Wow, 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 wow. Over here, over here, over here, over here. Wow. If you just got healed at some point, in at some point during both prayers, lift your hands to the Lord. Look at all of these healings. This is awesome. If you got healed, I want you to line up right here. Line up right here. If you got healed, if you got healed, I want you to line up right here, single file on John and Josh and the crew. I'll need your help. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Line up, line up right here. Facing this way, facing this way, facing this way. Look at all these healings. I hope you guys are getting this and getting pictures. This is amazing. I want you to look this way. I want you to face this way, face towards me, line up this way. So we'll have to, yeah, bring them this way, bring them this way. The Lord is still healing. Look, there's a line of healing. Stop right there. Perfect. Stop right there. Stop right there. Yeah, come, come close, come close, come close, come close, come close, come close, come close. I'll need this mic. What happened to you? I had a really bad cramp since last night. Uh huh. And as soon as he laid his hands on me, I felt this warmth in my hips. Who prayed for you? Completely gone. Oh, raise your hand. What do you think of that, buddy? It's amazing, right? And and now you don't have any. What did so you felt heat go I through your body? I felt heat all over my body. It felt so amazing. Like as soon as he laid his hands on me, the whole pain was gone. Wow. What do you feel on you now? I feel like I feel like I feel joy. Like it feels really good. Yeah. What happened to you? My left ankle wouldn't move completely to the side. Can you talk a little louder? Can you guys hear her? My left ankle wouldn't move completely. 
completely to the side, like it would barely move to the side at all. Uh -huh. And when they laid hands on me, like my leg started tingling and everything, and now I can completely move it. Wow, totally. Show me, show me. Come up here, come up here, come up here, come up here. You couldn't do that before? No, do it. It, and then now I can completely rotate my ankle. No pain? No. No pain. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Jump back down there. What happened to you, buddy? Um, I have, uh, I had bad astigmatism and farsighted, and I can see a lot clearer. It's, you can see clearer now? I can see a whole lot clearer. No way. Come on. Come up here. Um, how bad was your vision? Um, it was pretty hard for me to read. There was some blurry. It was just real blurry. So what could you read and what could you um, not read? Well, I could, uh, from where I was sitting, read the unshaped. You couldn't? I could, but uh -huh. it was blurry and it wasn't as blurry. Okay. It was a lot clearer. So if somebody held fingers up and did any of that, would, would, would you be able to see how many fingers they held up? Not very well. Okay, Ryan, move this quick. Run. Use your Nikes. Come on. Okay, stand over here. John, I'll need you, buddy. So hold that mic there. Isn't the Lord wonderful? He's here. Just stand, just stand for like... The only reason I'm having you stand is because it breaks you out of that monotony. And you're honoring what the Lord is doing. How many think if Jesus walked in, you'd probably stand? Well, he's, he's here. Okay. So from me to you, would you have struggled to see how many fingers I had up? No, you wouldn't have. How far would I need to be from you before you got healed? Okay, you tell me when. Hold that to, uh, mic up to him so we can hear. It would probably be a little bit off the stage. Oh, wow. Okay. Off the stage. Right. How about here? Probably about there and start getting a little closer. Okay. Fuzzy. How many fingers do I have up? Two. Okay. You got that right. Can you see me down here? Yes, sir. I can see Now you back up, because I'm all the way over here. That's pretty, I mean, I can barely do this one. <laughs> Two, one. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> this one, I can't even see your faces, but anyways. Five. Come on, man, this is awesome. Come on, y'all better get happy. You couldn't do that before? Not very well. Let's go fast. Two, one, four, five, one, or six, <laughs> five, three. Come on, man. Come on. This is awesome. Come on. Come on. I need the band up here. I need the band. What's your name? Uh, Micah. You were dancing last night, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, you're a good dancer. You're a good dancer. Get down there. Get down there, Micah. Stand. What happened to you? Um, Can we give the Lord praise for healing his eye? I had an infection in my stomach that caused a lot of pain. Uh -huh. And I also had problems with my lower back and like depression and fear and all that. Uh -huh. And as What was wrong with your lower back? Uh, it, when I was younger, I injured it and uh -huh. I never went to the doctor for it. So then can sit down, sit like, in the presence though, sit in the presence. It's just been like really painful from time to time. Was it hurting today? Yes, sir. Come up here. And, and, and what, what can you do now that you couldn't do before um, without pain? Before, I couldn't really turn around, like, you know, twist my back without too much pain. Okay, do it. Is there any pain? No, sir. No. None at all? Nope. And there was pain before you walked in? Yes. Wow. Come on. This is amazing. What's your name? Sarah Rayburn. Sarah Rayburn. I'll remember you. This is wonderful. This is, go back down there. Y'all move around here, but I want to keep you up here. It makes Jesus happy and the devil mad. Come, come here. What happened to you? Um, I used to have anxiety and bad stomach pains to the point where I get tired too quickly and I would get nauseous. Uh -huh. But um, as people laid their hands on me and I was being prayed for, um, I felt this warmth in my stomach and I, I felt completely healed after that. I didn't get nauseated from standing too long. I didn't get tired. I just felt... How I just long felt have you been that way? 
for like two years now. It's been wow, a long. Time. Did you feel something come over you? Yes, I did. What did that feel like? It, it felt amazing. It was warm. I. You feel that now? <laughs> yes, right now. Just I'm right away, right? Right now. Yeah, just right when you started saying that last sentence. Skin behind her. Skin behind her. Lift your hands to the Lord. Say Jesus. Jesus. I want more. I want more. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for healing me. And use me. Use me. So that others will be healed. So that others will be healed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Would everyone stretch their hands towards her? Heavenly Father, anoint her, give her more. Fill her from head to toe. Everyone pray in tongues over her life. In the name of Jesus Christ, be whole. Be anointed to heal the sick. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. What do you feel now? I feel, I feel even more warmth. I feel this weight has been lifted off of me. Isn't that amazing? amazing. You guys, can you see the joy on her face? So beautiful. Come on, lift a shout. Lift a shout. Go wait right over there. When you thank the Lord in your seats, God continues to do more. Every time you say thank you, you turn it up a notch. When God does something in a room, he's waiting to see how we react. If we celebrate it, it increases if we treat it as common, it turns off. That's just the way the Holy Spirit is. He's a gentleman. So remember that. And by the way, come, come. Remember, God, there is no small miracle to Jesus. So the eyes look like a big one. That's awesome. But her miracle is just as pricey as the eyes. Because the value is not determined by the miracle, by the need. The value is determined by who paid for it. By the, and that, the, the, the cost was the blood of Jesus. So whether you have a fever or a stub toe or cancer, when those get healed and everything in between, it's valuable. So we have to learn as a people to celebrate everything God is doing, okay? So remember that on this next testimony. Okay, what happened here? Um, I had spinal pain from my neck all the way down uh -huh. and I couldn't turn my neck and it got to the point where I didn't want to wake up in the morning because my whole body hurt. Uh -huh. um, so when people laid their hands on me, I mean, I could move my knees, I could turn Stand, Come neck. up here, come up here, come up here. And someone prayed for you and then yes, what? Yes, my friend prayed for me. And you prayed for her? You, had an, you needed a miracle, but you prayed for her and got one. It's so cool. Go, yes, okay. and I was shaking and I felt this warmth and this happiness and this joy and I just wanted to dance and he said destiny don't worry about it anymore hey are you a dancer I'm not a dancer oh okay yeah and he said when you wake up there's gonna be joy um, and you're gonna go out in the world and you're gonna so how, have, what happened to your neck what happened um, today is it healed yeah I can move it I could probably move it to about here and I would feel so so more. so stand this way before you can move it how how far I could probably just like slightly tilt okay. it do you no, feel like, can, is there no, any pain? There's no pain whatsoever. No pain, none. And, and did you have pain going down your back? I had it completely going down my back. I had it in my right knee and I could... And all of it's gone? Knee. All of it is gone. So can I grab your neck? Would you give me permission? Yes. To your head? Okay, come here, John. Okay. So does, does you're giving me permission to do yes. this? Okay. Does this hurt? No. No pain? No pain. No. And when's the last time you could do this without pain? Um, I don't even know. It's been a while. Years? It's been years. Wow, okay. So how do you feel? How does this feel? Feels great. I have no pain whatsoever. She's like, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Come on. So amazing. Stand right there. Come here. What happened, buddy? So my cartilage was inflamed. Come up here. It's not anymore, evidently. <laughs> no. Okay. And it got to the point where I couldn't run anymore, and I had like quit track and cross country. Okay. And now, like, I can fly. I can When's run. the last time you could do that? <laughs> it's been like three years. Three years? Yeah. Do something you couldn't do before without pain. Wow. Do that again. Wow. Not bad. Do it again. Good. Keep going. Nice. 
Wow. <laughs> ah, wow. Wow. Pain free. Wow. Can we give the Lord praise? Come on. Stand right here. What happened? I'm going to take a few more. Wow, man. Do, do the other jumps too. Oh, you got him. That's, that was better. What happened to you? I had back surgery before. No way. When? I was addicted to opiates. Wow. I had panic attacks, severe depression, anxiety, fear, worry. How long ago? About a year ago. A year ago. And I turned to the Lord and I started dwelling in the Word every single day, dwelling in the Word. I had nowhere else to bless you. I had nowhere else to turn. <laughs> I had nowhere else to run. Yeah. John, will you hold this for me? Keep going, buddy. I want to hear this. It got, it got filled with the Holy Spirit. And what did that do for and you? And it, it changed my... It, it, I saw the light. I saw the whole perspective. The, everything got pulled back. And now every single day is an opportunity to live and express your gifts, express everything that you have to live for because it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about you. It matters what the Lord thinks about you. And He loves you wholeheartedly in the name of Jesus. Come on. So what happened today? My friend Gray prayed for me. Big Gray. I came in here with a little bit of a, a sense of... Freaked this, out? The little, there was something I turned in that uh, was I had a little doubt about. Uh -huh. There was a shadow of doubt. Sure, yeah. And literally got prayed for and, and got filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm just radiating right now. Wow. Did you have a physical? Physical, yeah. What happened? I, I, I'm just complete light. I, I mean... Did you have an injury I do, or I do still have bulging discs in my neck. I uh -huh. had a, a bulging disc in my back. had back surgery. And how's that feel now? Incredible. Incredible. Amazing. So what and could they, you... They told, me, they told me basically if, if I were to injure it again, I wouldn't be able to do anything athletically. So what could you do now I can do everything, that you couldn't you do, before? do before? Uh, like before you walked in today? Before I walked in today? Yeah, without pain. I mean, probably my neck was hurting a little bit. Okay, so just move it slowly. It feels great. Incredible. There's no pain. No pain. Wow. You feel the power of God I, on you. I feel the entire my whole. I'm indwelled with the Holy Spirit right now. Wow. Everything. I'm. I'm. I. My. My hand. I can. I can heal. Well, the Lord can heal. But the he Lord can, can use heal. It. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Wow, man. What's your name? Tim. Tim. Amazing. Stand over there. Make Jesus happy. The devil mad. Yeah. Come here. I'm gonna take three more. Come here. Come here. Look at this line. All you got healed. All of you got healed. Hey, uh, Ryan, grab your phone or something, and I want you to just start videoing this line of people. Just take it and like get footage of this line of people. This is incredible. What happened? I like every three when I'd stand up every three minutes. I'd have like extreme pain in my feet, and now like I was like when they prayed for me, I felt like a cold like a who, sheet. Who, of who prayed for you? Raise your hand if you prayed for him. What do y'all think of that? So, wait, wait. Hey, come here. Come here, you little hooligans. Get over here. I like y'all already. So, did, when you walked in today, did, were you expecting to heal the sick? Uh, well, come here, buddy. This guy's awesome. Huh? Just stay right there. I got, I got the mic. Go ahead. It's a church service. So, what's so, that mean? It means uh, half expecting it, but it was, it was still awesome, dude. I love it. <laughs> What's your name? Josh. Man, I like you. So, so you probably didn't think when you walked in that a miracle would happen under your hands, huh? Yeah, yeah. It, it was a surprise, but a welcome one. Wow. But what's, come here, come here. What's your name? Titus. And you prayed for him too? Yeah. What did you say when you prayed for him? Uh, I don't know. I just, I felt the power. Wait, your name is Tigris? Yeah, Titus. I think it's the Tigris River? What did he say? Oh, Titus. Titus. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, wow. You got <laughs> so, some charismatic parents. Okay. I don't, I don't know. I just, I felt his feet get hot. Or something. You felt his feet get hot? Yeah. And, and he felt them get cold. Isn't yeah. that the Lord? <laughs> and I just, I kept on saying, just the fire of the Lord, Holy Spirit. Are your parents here? Yeah. Uh, wh where are Titus's parents? Stand on up. What do you think of that, man? God using your kids like that. Your kid. Are, are y'all related? No. We're oh, just friends. Just friends. Yeah. <laughs> I like this guy. That's amazing. Wow. 
So your, where's the pain on your feet? Is it gone? It's gone. I mean, I've been standing for 20 minutes straight and there's no pain at all. No pain. Can you stomp them? What do you, what? Can you hit them on the ground? Would that have hurt you before? Um, yeah. Okay, do something you couldn't do. Go ahead. Mainly just stand up for a long time. That was the main thing I couldn't do. That's the main thing you couldn't do. No, how long have you been standing now? 20 minutes, maybe. No pain. And how long could you stand before, before the pain started? Three to five. Three to five. Wow. This is amazing. What's your name again? Josh. Josh, what would you tell those adults back there who might think that um, healing's a little more difficult than... than uh, just flow in the Spirit. That's all you have to do. Do what the Lord says and you'll do fine. <laughs> you'll do fine. Go stand out there, man. Come here. I love it. How'd that feel when you jumped down? Good? Good. What, what, what's your name? Come up here close. My name's David. What happened today? Uh, er, one, I remember once uh, I was playing a game over there and I must have hit the ball wrong and my middle finger started hurting. Okay. And uh, it, today when the people were laying hands on me, well, I wasn't able to stretch my finger out like okay, this. Okay, lift that up. Without pain. Okay. You couldn't do that my before? My middle finger. Yeah. And, and you hurt it today? No. Oh, okay. And then, what, what did what happened? How did you get healed? Uh, there were some people. There were some people over there who laid hands on me, and now it's healed. Wow! Totally pain free. Well, just about. Just about. So, how how on a scale of one to ten, how much pain do you have now? You don't have to get it exactly right. One or two. One or two. Hey, Josh and. Uh, your new name is Tigris, by the way, so I just renamed you. Where are you, buddy? Come up here. You too. So he, he got about nine, nine pain points taken away. We got one more to go here. So come up here. I put your hands there on his finger. Hold that, John. And um, Josh, you pray. Lord, I pray over his fingers right now. The, the pain Stretch will, your hands. The pain will be all but gone, Lord. It will be disintegrated. You will flow in. Your power, I just pray, it flows through his veins. Every single pain receptor will get calmed down. There will be no reactions in his fingers, Lord. I pray that he'll be 10 out of 10 healed. And I just I just thank you, Lord, that he, he'll have a good convention, Lord. I thank you for the healing power that flows through flows through us, flows through him. I thank you, Lord, that he'll just, his fingers, they'll heal up yeah. all the way. No more pain at all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say fingers, everyone. Finger, be completely healed. Check it out. Yeah, keep moving it. Thank you, Lord. So when this is happening, when it's getting, Benny says it's getting better like that, you just thank the Lord for what he's doing. Thank you, Lord. And then as you're thanking him for what he's doing, he finishes the job. Thank you, Father. Now, what do you feel now? Uh, it's definitely getting better. Yeah, as we speak? Mm -hmm. Good, so stand right down there. Stand right down there. By the time I'm done, it'll be completely whole. Thank you, guys. Last one. Last one. Come up here, buddy. Wow, you know the Lord's called to you. Hold this. Pick up those keys, please. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, fish. The Lord's called to you. Lift your hands to the Lord. Everyone, stretch your hands and pray in the Spirit. This is a mighty man of God. This is the, one of those generational servants that there are few in each generation. He'll be a mighty leader. He'll carry an apostolic anointing. What's your name? Father, I thank you for JD. I thank you, Lord, that today 
a new measure of your power is coming on him and that he'll literally establish and shake nations. He'll establish your kingdom and he'll be a man of your glory and your presence. The Father, you'd haunt him in the night with the word of the Lord over his life. No matter where he tries to go, he wouldn't be able to get away. But JD, I've called you, says the Lord. I've called you to establish. I've called you to uproot. I've called you to declare. I've called you as a father, a father to the body of Christ and a father to nations. And my healing power will flow through you. And you remember this day that something came from heaven and stuck that it's stuck and it'll never leave. Father, as I lay my hands on JD, I pray that the power of your spirit would flow through him and that he'd never be the same. Stretch your hands. In the name of Jesus, be anointed. Be anointed, be anointed, be anointed. Be anointed. Be anointed. Stand him up. What happened to you? What do you feel on you? You hold it. Wow. What do you feel? It's like I'm really nice and warm. Uh, nice and warm. Yeah. And happy. Very. Well, so if you tell tell them what the Lord's power feels like. Okay. Well, it feels amazing. It's just like this. It's like like I forgot who said it, but like when you stand at the edge of a building and like look down and you got that feeling of like, oh, I could fall and die. And then you step back and realize you're safe. And then that feeling of like, I'm safe now. And is Are your parents here? Uh, no, they're in the convention. Okay. Let's, but, uh, let's keep going. And so, yeah, it's, and it's just like a, like a warm feeling, like, like you're being hugged almost or like, it's just like so, like so soft and like tangible, like you can feel that it's there. And like, That's a person. That's the Lord. He's real. There's substance to him. You feel him. You're feeling him. What happened to you today? Well, I used to be pigeon toed for. Oh no way! The Lord straightened your feet. Yeah, like used to. If I was like, if you're like. Is pigeon toed in or out? Like this. Oh yeah, out like, stuck. And like when I right? run, my feet would like go like that. Wow. Right now, Are you guys like, hearing him? Can it, where's the camera, uh, the camera guy, the cameraman? Oh, sir, can you get his feet? So t tell them, tell them, like tell if, them what your feet used to be like. Like if I could, if I jumped my and like landed normally, used to my feet would like be like this, but now I just and like did, they just normally sit like this. So so when you would stand, were they like this? Yeah. It just so you like, stood. Your feet were just like that. Yeah, they were either like this, like just straight, or uh -huh. like this. And when I'd run, they'd like go in. And, and you, it was you, causing a deformity, like a lump right here, and it's like gone. The lump's gone? Yeah. Take, take, come on! Come on, take, take your shoe off. Man, this is awesome. Take your shoe off, JD. What's that stand for? Uh, John Daniel. Jimmy, what is it? John, John Daniel. Deere? Oh, John Daniel. Go ahead, take that sock off. Your feet stink, so do John's. Where's the lump? It used to be right here. And it's gone? Yeah, because my feet would go like this and it would cause bone to come Hold on, hold on. Okay, put, turn, turn, turn your foot that way. Y'all are acting so cool like this isn't a big deal, some of you. This is a big deal. Um, so that lump was right. I'm not touching those little stinky feet. How, well, the lump was like right there? Uh-huh. And it, did you feel it disappear? Yeah, like I could feel it like when they were praying for me. They're over there. Uh, when they were praying for me, I like felt something like Who right prayed for you? Oh, don't be... Oh, you did. What do you think of that? It's Thank awesome, you. huh? You can do that every day now. So, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, come on. So, so what, what did you feel come over you and did, did you feel your feet straight? Yeah, I did. I felt that lump like I felt it like go back in. Wow. And then I like looked down and my feet were like this. And like, oh. like they are now. I'm getting really excited. I want to punch John in the face. I don't even know why. Okay. I'll put those shoes back on so we don't smell your feet. This is good stuff. Can the camera go back on him and watch him put his... Yeah, there we go. This is really good. 
I think people are watching around the world, so this is important. They get <laughs> get your shoe back on. Your parents aren't going to believe what happened to you. Get that shoe back on. And then uh, I want you all to make room for him. Clear, clear, back up if you can. Make room for him. I want to see something here. You don't have to double knot it or anything. <laughs> JD, John Daniel. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Get, put that mic on it. Uh, say that again. When I'd like sit like this, my feet would like go like this and it was comfortable. Now it's like, now that kind of hurts to do that. It's like, it hurts to go back to the bad way. Yeah. And it, it feels good to be like that. Wow. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Come here. Stand up. Well, y'all, y'all, would y'all move forward, please? Just everyone here, move forward and make him some room there. Okay. I want you to run. I want you to go start right there in that corner. See where Josh is, where it says Dwelling Place Church? Okay, go stand next to Josh. Okay, I want you to run. Ryan, wave. And, but stand over there, Ryan. Like, go, go, go that way. One more aisle over, buddy. Okay, so before you run and your feet were pointed in, I want you to run to Ryan. Run to Ryan. Could you do that before? No. Come on, guys. Could you do that before? Do it again. How's that feel? Come on, run, John Daniel, run. Go. 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 Keep going. Go, go, go. How's that feel? Keep, <laughs> keep going. Do it again. I'm having fun. Go. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Guys, come on. Let's give him praise. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Come on, just begin to thank him. Just begin to thank him. Thank you, Jesus, that you're doing what we dreamed of. You're doing, you're creating, you're healing. You're doing everything we dreamed about, Jesus. And we thank you for more. But Lord, we want to say thank you for all you've done today. Thank you. Just begin to thank him. Thank him out loud. Thank him out loud. Thank you for every miracle. Every miracle. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, lift your hands to heaven. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit would fall on everybody in this room, everyone watching, that the power to heal the sick and preach Jesus and deliver people from devils and raise the dead, that it would rest on everyone here and that a fresh baptism of the Spirit would come. In Jesus' name.